Welcome to the Shelby Sports Show. On this episode, it was senior night on the basketball court, and later on, Zach Hamilla has us covered with some hockey. But to begin this episode, the Eisenhower boys basketball team hosted Gross Point North for their senior night. The Eisenhower Eagles hosted Gross Point North on senior night, Tuesday, January 30th. A cool moment on the opening tip as Eisenhower went with an all-senior lineup and Dominic Trippi gets into the stat sheet with a foul before checking out of the game for another senior in Cody Raymond. Speaking of Raymond, he gets the lay-in here. Then Braden Booza drives and scores off glass. Then Owen Van Dam knocks down the three to level us at seven, middle of the first. Ian Patterson hits the three and it's 10 all with two minutes to go in the quarter. Just seconds later, Patterson would strike again, putting Ike ahead. And how about three times from number three as Patterson rips the net again? Final seconds of the first as Hayden Bills gets in on the three-point fun for Ike. Gross Point North with a three at their end rims out and Ike leads by four after one. Patterson continues his hot start here. Then Booza attacks the rim and scores. Ike leads 27-23. Final seconds of the half sees Gross Point North unable to convert on a couple chances. Ike leads at the half. Bills gets it in the corner for three and hits. Then Booza breaks out and scores. Booza finds a cutting Preston Crum for two, Ike by four. Alex Edgar gets the lay in here. At the quarter buzzer, the three is banked home and Ike leads by three after three. Bill steps into a three here and fills it. Uza does what he does, spiraling and scoring. He follows that up with a lay-in, but Ike trails by one late. With 20 seconds left, the free throw doesn't fall. Ike pushes it up the floor to Patterson, who rises for three and ties the ball game at 58. The Norsemen race the ball back up floor and the foul is called on Hayden Bills with seven tenths of a second left. The first free throw spins in, but the second jumps off. Eisenhower falls at home on a last second free throw, 59 to 58. A heartbreaking loss at home for the Eagles in a game that came down as we saw there to the final seconds in that one, but an exciting finish for sure. For the Utica Chieftains, they held their senior night as well in the last few weeks. They welcomed in Lakeview in a game that was rescheduled from earlier this season. The still undefeated Utica Chieftains hosted the Lakeview Huskies Tuesday, February 6th. The tip is up and controlled by Utica. Not even 15 seconds in, Numini Gwilly knocks down the three. Here comes Mason Brody kicking it to Sebastian Soriano for three. The putback is good for Blake Dean.
flash from three for Gwilly again, and it's eight to two. Late in the first, Tim Gatiss buries the three, and it's back to a five-point lead. Final seconds of the quarter ticking down for Lakeview as they get the layup at the buzzer. After one, it's 17 to 12 Utica. To the second quarter as the three is off by Willie, but Brody is there for the putback. Then Hussein Nasser gets the shot to drop and draws the foul. Free throw doesn't go, but Soriano puts it back. Final sequence of the half for Lakeview as they get an open look for three that skips out. Utica with one more push comes up short, and at the half, it's 28 to 23. Mason Brody gets the party started with a three to begin the second half. Later in the third, Soriano finds Gatiss for three. It's 42 to 33. Brody would race to the hoop in the final seconds of the third, but can't get the shot to go. One final look for Lakeview, but they can't get a shot off in time. We head to the fourth quarter with Utica leading 46 to 37. Brody goes driving in and scores on the run. Then moments later, Ali Hassan drops it off to Brody inside and he scores again. It's 51 to 39. Up the floor goes for Soriano and the Chieftains score again. Late in this one, Soriano goes with the head fake and pulls up for two. Utica with a 63 to 48 lead. Lakeview comes up empty at the end of this one and Utica wins on this night by a final of 65 to 48. The Utica Chieftains continue to roll in this 2023-24 season as we saw there with a still undefeated record this late into the season. Our final highlights on the boys' side in basketball saw the Utica Chieftains taking on the Fitzgerald Spartans in the finals of the Mac Blue vs. Gold Tournament. The undefeated Utica Chieftains faced a test in the Mac Blue Gold Championship game at Anchor Bay. Their opponent, the Fitzgerald Spartans. A few seconds into the game, Sebastian Soriano set the tone for Utica, sinking this three-pointer. But the Spartans come back scoring seven unanswered points to take the lead seven to three. Here Mason Brody chases down the rebound and drops a three-pointer. Cutting Fitzgerald lead to one, seven to six. Brody would fall off with another three-pointer to give Utica the lead nine to seven. The Chieftains would close out the first with a backdoor pass from Soriano to Brody. and the Chieftains led 11 to seven. Early in the second, this three-pointer by Luke Cottingham would put Utica up seven. 
Watch Mason Brody go up and over his defender with no backboard. Midway in the second, the Spartans would get to within three, but the Chieftains' offense created some distance for themselves. Ali Hassan with a three-pointer. Then Sebastian Soriano takes it the length of the court for the left-handed layup, and Utica was up 21-13. Newman Gwilly then forced the Spartans to call a timeout with this three to put the Chieftains up by 11. Hassan would close out the first half with a last second three to give Utica the lead going into the locker room, 27-13. Some tight defense and a potent fast break is capped off with two more for Brody. Later in the third, the Spartans went on a little bit of a run to get back into it. But Utica stayed hot and went into the fourth quarter leading 40-28. In the fourth quarter, the Chieftains put in eight points and basically played keep away with the ball. To close this one out, 48 to 34. As the Utica Chieftains hoist the Mac Blue Gold Tournament Trophy with bigger trophies on their mind. That'll wrap up our boys basketball highlights for this episode. On the other side of this timeout, we'll check out the Utica girls highlights next. There's just one place where students are students first and athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives including academics, high school sports, a winning part of a complete education. So, I got my start in officiating when a friend told me I should try it. At first I just did basketball and I got hooked. Before long I added baseball, softball, football and volleyball. I really enjoy giving back to the game, working with kids and working with my local association to recruit and train new officials. I would like to say to anybody that officiating is a great way to help kids and stay connected to the game. We always need new officials. There's help wanted, just listen. Welcome back on the Shelby Sports Show. As promised, before the break, the Utica girls basketball team held their senior night hosting Anchor Bay. The Utica Chieftains welcomed the Anchor Bay Tars on senior night where the senior class sang the national anthem in pregame. The tip is up and we're underway. Here come the Chieftains and Vanessa Galovich who scores the first basket by Utica. A nice pass by Sarah Fromm finds Alexis Pokley for two, but Utica trails 8-4. to four. 
final shot of the first is long and the Tars lead 17-5 after one. Off a baseline inbound, Galovich knocks down the three on another assist from Fromm. This pass gets deflected to Pokley who hits the free throw line jumper. Chieftains trail by five. Galovich on the move, hangs and hits. Play would be halted after the basket due to a scoreboard outage. Once they got the board back up and running, the Tars had one final look in the half and they convert, taking a 30 to 24 lead to the break. In the third, Fromm steps into a three and drains it. That leads to an Anchor Bay timeout as their lead is just one. Galovich finds Fromm for three and she nails it again, but Utica trails by eight. The third quarter ends after a run by the Tars. Bella Lugerai buries the three, then Galovich scores to make it 62-47. Pokley lobs it inside to Galovich, who gets the layup, but Utica trails 63-52 in the final minute. This three by Lugerai hits the top of the backboard, and Utica falls 68-54 to the Tars. It was a special treat that night seeing the Chieftains seniors perform the national anthem before their matchup with the Tars. When we come back, we'll get to some hockey next. So, I got my start in officiating when a friend told me I should try it. At first, I just did basketball, and I got hooked. Before long, I added baseball, softball, football, and volleyball. I really enjoyed giving back to the game, working with kids, and working with my local association to recruit and train new officials. I would like to say to anybody that officiating is a great way to help kids and stay connected to the game. We always need new officials. There's help wanted, just listen. There's just one place where students are students first. And athletics are played with purpose and perspective. That place is your local high school. High school sports offer more than the joy of competition. Studies show that student athletes are also likely to enjoy greater levels of achievement in other areas of their lives, including academics. High school sports, a winning part of a complete education. Final segment of the show sends us to the ice rink as the Eisenhower Eagles played the Romeo Bulldogs in a rematch back from episode two of the Shelby Sports Show. And as always, Zach Hamilla has more. The Eisenhower Eagles and the Romeo Bulldogs get a rematch of their December 22nd matchup in their final meeting this season. After a barn burner 5-5 tie, the Eagles and Bulldogs hope to get an edge in this rivalry series as we reach the tail end of the season. Romeo would strike first as Ryan Osupka fails to cover the puck leading to a scramble at the crease where Brody Meyer slips it by to make it 1-0 Bulldogs. Ike tests the Bulldogs in net. Jacob Sherritt rips a snapshot but is stuffed by Cameron Cyrus. Julian Kotinski wins a battle against the boards, feeding Meyer up the wing where he notches his second goal of the night to give Romeo a two goal lead late in the first. The Bulldogs come into the second period swinging. Drew Bosch and Alessandro Evangelista pick apart Ike's back check to give Romeo their third unanswered goal. Romeo would nearly increase their lead to four, but Asupka makes a crucial stop. The Eagles get shoved further back on the defensive. Weston Suter draws two minutes for interference and puts the Bulldogs on the power play. Spencer Grzykowicz primes Evangelista at the blue line, firing a wrist shot, getting his second of the night and expanding Romeo's lead to four. With four unanswered goals on 17 shots, Ike pulls Ryan Osupka and puts Griffin Curran in net for the remainder of the night. Curran attempts to keep Eisenhower alive in this blowout as he makes two huge stops to close out the second period and open the third. 
While shorthanded, Romeo's penalty kill unit clears their zone, hustles, and centers a pass to Meyer to complete a hat trick. Now 5 0 Romeo. Romeo continues to bury the Eagles. A shot on goal from the high slot is picked up from Dylan Bosha to give the Bulldogs now their sixth unanswered goal. But Ike would play spoiler for Cameron Cyrus and the Bulldogs. Sherritt breaks through the defenders to Mikey Zelnick, who shatters Romeo's shutout and finally puts Ike on the board. However, the Bulldogs' damage has been done. They'll cruise comfortably to a 6-1 victory over the Eagles. The Bulldogs will remain in playoff contention in the Red Division as they seek to topple Anchor Bay and Chippewa Valley United. For the Eagles, they'll hope to close out their season at Suburban Ice with victories and a roadmap to vast improvement come next season. This is Zach Camilla, Shelby TV. Eagles come up short against the Bulldogs this time around. The Utica Ford United program had their shot at the Bulldogs. And once again, we go back to Zach Hamilla. In Suburban Ice Macomb's annual Hockey Fights Cancer Charity Night, Utica Ford United takes on the Red Division leader Romeo Bulldogs. After a lopsided 10-1 victory over Port Huron High, United aims to carry that momentum to climb up the White Division ranks. Romeo would get sent on an early power play as United's Anthony Zarnecki draws two minutes for interference. Clearing up the wing, Spencer Grzykowicz fires and beats the blocker of Eli Choden to put Romeo up 1-0 with a power play goal early in the first period. United answers back. In an attempt to clear their zone, Romeo turns the puck over to allow Trevor Townsend to slip one by Landon D'Angelo. But the Bulldogs would rally back and regain the lead. Connor Phipps wraps around the net to Alessandro Evangelista, who narrowly buries it to make it 2-1 Romeo. Romeo adds to their score sheet with Grzykowicz again finding a lane. This time, peeling back to Drew Basha to make it 3-1 Bulldogs with 3-11 left in the first. United would close out the period, pulling their deficit back to just one. Nico Leib snaps one to the net with the rebound picked up by Nate Sheridan, ending the first at 3-2 in favor of Romeo. But with the second period, the Bulldogs began what would be an offensive onslaught. Starting with Lincoln Lepasek, whose attempt to begin a scoring chance for the Bulldogs ends in a goal from a tough angle. United seemed to catch a break as Dylan Basha finds two minutes in the box for roughing. Romeo would deflate United's power play unit with two back-to-back shorthanded goals from Drew Basha in securing his hat trick for the night, the first coming on a clear breakaway. Followed by Cole Paquette setting him up at the crease after picking off an attempted United clear. The early barrage would end as Dominic Degenfelder gets the final touch on a crash to United's net. While United would keep the Bulldogs at bay for most of the period, rapid goal scoring would come back for Romeo. The final minute of the second period would see back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back goals from Evangelista, Dylan Basha, and Christopher Paquette at the expense of a five-minute charging major against United. At an eight-goal deficit heading into the third period, this matchup wraps up early under Mersing ruling with Utica Ford United 2, Romeo Bulldogs 10. United seeks to stay in contention in the white division as their strength of schedule leans heavily in their favor. For the Bulldogs, they'll remain atop the red division as their season concludes with multiple divisional rivalries to challenge their spot. This is Zach Amella, Shelby TV. Well, that'll do it for this episode. Make sure to stay tuned in the next few weeks for more both on Shelby TV and the Shelby TV YouTube channel as well.